the building blocks transplanted into the code base. The APIs I have in my renderer abstract the concept of quad batches, and the font system is structured to isolate the font parsing and construct a relatively optimized layout for the font data. Now I need an API layer that faces the application and makes its tasks easy to handle. This layer will be composed out of the lower level layer that I already have. At the low level, everything is rendered in batches, but an application will often want to specify quads and strings one at a time. What I need is a higher level API that lets the application draw a rounded rectangle or a string and automatically behind the scenes turn those draws into a single batch for the low level API. I also need a helper that automates the process of drawing a string so that users don't have to write their own layout and conversion to quads for basic text rendering needs. Since the string drawing helper is going to rely on batch automation, I'm going to get started with the batch automation part. Here's the helper API I'm going to use for a first pass. There are a few ideas here. First, the quad list type is how I'm going to organize a batch of quads that is still under construction. The lower level API just takes in a pointer to the first quad node in a chain and the total number of quads, but this API needs to know more. It needs to know where the list ends in addition to where it begins. It needs to know how many nodes there are in the list, and it needs to keep track of how much unused memory there is at the end of the last node in the list. The first function gives the ability to push one quad onto this list. The user has to specify the whole quad every time, and in exchange they get access to the full flexibility of this rendering system. The second function is another helper on top of the first. This fills in some defaults for solid rounded rectangles. Both APIs take an arena and a quad list. The arena provides the memory allocation for extending the list, and the list itself is the under construction batch that remembers each new quad that is put onto the list. Combining arenas and linked lists like this is a fantastic way to build super simple batching systems. Here's how they work. Whenever I'm putting something onto the list, I simply have to go through a series of checks to make sure the list is expanding appropriately. First, I guarantee that the list has at least one node on it. Next, I make sure that the last node of the list, or the tail node, has space for a new quad. If it doesn't, I push a new node onto the list, replacing the previous tail with a new tail. Next, I make sure that the tail node has its buffer allocated. If this is the first time the node has been allocated previously in the function, then it won't have its buffer yet, and so this part makes sure that the buffer is there. After all of that, assuming memory allocations have succeeded, I have a list with a tail node that has at least one slot in its buffer for a new quad. So I can finally fill the next available quad slot and increment the counts in the tail node and in the whole quad list. All right, everything is built. Time to try using this in main. Turns out when I start trying to use this system, I feel like this extra variable in the quad list for setting the node capacity is a bit pointless. So I switched the concept of node capacity to just being a fixed constant. Now the user doesn't have to make any decision about capacity when they start creating a quad list. This might seem counterintuitive, but I have found that having little knobs like that to microtune performance when I'm not doing anything to measure and study how they work usually hurts more than it helps. This is the result I get at first. It looks like some kind of bug in the outline thickness, so time to debug.
So it turns out if I use a very large thickness, I get this strange little artifact. I suspect because I'm adding a relatively small number to this huge number here in the shader, I end up losing precision and getting this D underscore mirror that is effectively zero and some rounding error. When I switch to a default thickness that is smaller but still plenty large, the artifact goes away. Next up is the string drawing helper. Here I have an organization problem. Is the string drawing function a helper in the tool2d layer, making the tool2d layer dependent on the font layer? Or is it a part of the font layer, which would then make the font layer dependent on the tool2d layer? Or, alternatively to both of those, should it live in yet another layer that is separate from both tool2d and font, but dependent on both of them? My first idea is to go with another layer to avoid making a decision, but I don't want to throw in a bunch of new folders and files, so I'm going to just add in a separate file in the font folder. In that way, I have it sort of isolated from everything, but I don't have to overinvest in coming up with this new organization. I'm going to do another organization pass through all this stuff later, so I don't need to worry about this too much right now. After dealing with some more unfinished code in the font layer and implementing the string drawing function, here is the API I ended up with. This one takes in the arena and quad list, just like the single quad and uh, rectangle helpers did. It takes a baked font, this is the data that tells it how to convert characters into quads, and it takes a string, and these are the actual characters that need to get laid out and turned into quads. And then finally, it takes a position for the string and a color for the string. Well, it turns out nothing's gonna work on the first time today, so time for more debugging. All right, bug number one. The glyph indexes stored in the map need to be adjusted down since my arrays for the layout data start at the minimum glyph index, not at the index zero. Bug number two, this softness thing in the shader needs to be disabled for the textured quads or else it makes the boundaries of the texture look all weird. Unfortunately, during recording, I failed to spot bug number three here, which is that the space between the comma and the capital W in Hello World isn't showing up. But with that, I've made pretty good progress on all of this. In the next video, I'll clean some of this up more, and eventually I'll spot that bug and fix it too. So see you next time.